Today we are going to be draping a circle skirt. Our skirt will consist of two separate pieces of fabric, one for the front and one for the back. Each one will be a quarter circle draped from the center front or center back over to the side seam. Prepare two pieces of muslin for your drape according to the following specifications. For this project, we're going to learn how to rotate fullness into a garment. This technique can be used for full skirts, peplums, or even cascading ruffles. The goal as we rotate fullness into our skirt is to do so as evenly as possible, ending with the top edge of our fabric parallel to the side seam by the time we reach it. To begin draping our front, we'll want to start by securing the intersection of our center front and horizontal balance line on our fabric to the same point on the dress form, which will be the center front with the bottom edge of the style tape at the hip level. So match up your marks and secure with a set of cross pins. Normally we would continue to pin the horizontal balance line across, but you'll see that as we rotate fullness into the garment, this line will drop away from the hip level. So for the moment, we're not going to have it pinned anymore. We're going to proceed by moving on to pinning the center front. So you just want to smooth right up the center front and pin it at the waist, as well as once halfway to the waist, right about abdomen or high hip level. Now, aside from what I just mentioned about the horizontal balance line, for this very first stage, we are going to temporarily pin our horizontal balance line to the hip level right around at our princess line. So I want to feel for our princess line and smooth horizontal balance line over to that point and just place a temporary holding pin there. Most of our work right now is going to be happening up here along the waistline. So I'm going to smooth the fabric upwards from the horizontal balance line to the waistline and make sure I've also smoothed over from the center front. This process that we do right here is going to be repeated across the entire waistline. So here's the first step of it. Come over about a half inch from your center front and you want to pin the waistline just a tiny bit above the actual bottom edge of the waist tape. Next, take your shears and coming in from the center front, we want to trim across just as far over as our pin is placed, doing so about mm, three quarters of an inch or so above the bottom of the waist tape. So just a little ways above the top edge of the tape. So we wanna trim over to right about here and then Right where our pin is placed, we're going to clip downward. And in these downward clips that you do, you want to always be stopping about a quarter of an inch above the bottom of the waist tape, which basically means you're clipping down to the middle of the tape itself as we repeat this process. We did this little clip so that as we rotate fullness in, we're going to see these little clips sort of spread open by a certain amount. So for each portion of this drape, I'm going to hold my fabric up at the top here and sort of rotate and drop it down a ways so that the clip spreads open. A good amount that you want to see your clip spreading open is about a quarter of an inch or so at the widest point. And as I drop my fabric downwards, you'll see that I have a little bit of fullness coming down to the hemline of the skirt. So as I've let the clip open up, I'm now going to smooth across the bottom of the waist tape another half inch or so and pin again just a little bit above the bottom edge of the waist tape. That holding pin we had in our horizontal balance line for the first rotation is the only one that we need. We can now unpin it and we will no longer be doing any pinning across the horizontal balance line. You'll see the line actually start to drop and rotate downwards throughout this whole process. So now that I have my next pin along the waistline, I'm going to come up to where my trimming left off and continue trimming the same kind of distance above the bottom of the waist tape. And I trimmed just a little bit past where that pin is. And now I will clip downwards where the pin is, about halfway deep on the waist tape. Now we continue dropping our fabric downward to open up the little clip right here by about a quarter of an inch. And as I do so, see how this is becoming more and more full at the bottom. More of this fabric is rotating into the hemline. Your goal as you go across is to be rotating this fullness in as evenly as possible. 
So a good gauge for that is seeing that your clips are opened up at the same amount across the top as you do each section. So with my clip newly opened up, I'm now going to smooth over another half inch, pin a little bit above the waist tape, and repeat. At this point, I'm about halfway across my waistline. So a good sort of check-in point to make sure that you finish with all your fullness rotated in evenly is right about when you've made it halfway across the waist. As we do our trim and our clip and rotate downwards, the goal is to have the fabric be hanging on the true bias at this point. So let's see if we can do that. I'm going to continue my trim over to that pin I just placed, clip it downwards, rotate in my little bit of fullness there, and I want to be looking at the actual yarns that make up the fabric in both directions, my warp and my weft. And I want to see that the true bias of the fabric, which is at a 45 degree angle to both the warp and the weft, is hanging straight down parallel with the body as I do this rotation that is halfway across the waist. So if it looks like I'm about at that point, then I'm good to go ahead and continue. Move over another half inch, pin, trim, clip downward, and repeat. Let it drop down a bit, pin over another half inch, and then I will trim and clip. And the goal as we come around to the side seam for our final rotation is to have this edge of the fabric, which initially started off being the top edge, we want to have that edge of the fabric hanging parallel to the side seam of the dress form, okay? So notice how it won't be actually even with the side seam, it will end in the same place, but we want it parallel to the side seam. So for your final drop of this excess, bring it forward and have that be your guide for how much you're supposed to rotate into the final portion. And once you feel that that edge is parallel with your side seam, place your final pin at the side seam waist corner of the dress form. As the edge of your fabric is hanging down in that parallel to the side seam position, go ahead and also pin your side seam down here at the hip level. And just to get it out of the way, I could even cut off this last little flap of fabric. After we've done that, sort of Give a little check as you rotate around and see that these folds of fullness that hang down feel even as you rotate the garment from the center front around to the side seam. You're checking for even fullness all the way around the skirt. Once you decide that you're satisfied with your drape, it'll be time to mark. Starting at the center front, we are going to cross mark our waistline continue to dot along the waistline at the bottom edge of the tape. Then you will cross mark where the waistline meets the side seam. While it's not totally crucial, I would still recommend placing a couple dots down the length of your side seam, but you will definitely need to make sure to cross mark where the side seam meets the hip level, which is the bottom edge of your style tape. And lastly, in the event that you may want to sew your circle skirt onto a bodice, it is very helpful to have the princess line marked as well. So we're gonna come over to our princess line on the dress form and do a cross mark where princess line meets waistline. The final thing we need to do is mark the hem. So you are going to determine the length that you would like your skirt to be and mark an even hemline along the entire bottom edge of the circle skirt. If we were draping on a full scale form, the form usually consists of a lower portion down here called the cage that has numerous horizontal rungs. And those rungs end up being a wonderful way for us to mark an even hem at varying levels. However, our half scale form has no horizontal guidelines for us to mark our hem. So instead, we are going to be using our ruler to measure an even distance from the bottom of our hip level down to where we would like the hem to be. 
We cannot measure our hem length starting at the waistline because the body has so many changes between the waist and the hip level as you move around the form, meaning the body is fuller at the back and therefore the distance from waistline to hip line can be very different as you move around. So the best way to measure and mark our hem will be measuring an even distance from the hip level down to where you would like your desired hemline to be. For choosing your desired hemline, you want to select something that's anywhere between 6 and 12 inches below the hip level. Once you've decided what your preferred length will be, a good tip is to use a post-it note to mark that position on the ruler. I'm going to go with a little shorty skirt, so I'm going to do 6 inches below the hip level, and I'm going to stick a post-it note right on that line of the ruler. Now that my ruler is marked at six inches with my desired hemline, I have a nice visual guide to match up to the bottom edge of the style tape as I mark my hem. So starting from around the center front, you want to match that point on your ruler that you have marked with the bottom edge of your hip level tape and come all the way down to the zero edge of the ruler. And starting from your center front, you will want to mark that. And then you're going to have to carefully work your way around the dress form, moving the fabric over and adjusting it so that you have an almost continuous dashed line hem marked. So I'm just going to let a little bit of my fabric come over. And you want to know that wherever you are marking the hem, you have to be sure that your fabric is hanging down straight from that point. And be sure that you are also not measuring from the horizontal balance line marked on the fabric. We are looking at the style tape below that is staying put at the model's actual hip level. So right about here, I can match up my ruler. And if you need to, you can reach in from underneath and hold the ruler as you come down to the bottom and mark with your pencil. And then you'll continue to rotate your garment and mark the hem at multiple places. See how I just kind of adjust the fabric, move it forward, match up my ruler, and mark. Match up my ruler to the hip level, and mark. Just keep rotating the fabric forward and only marking directly below the portion that is hanging down straight. If you look at your drape afterwards and see any big portions that are skipped, then you'll want to go back and make sure you have a mark sitting in that area. So I'm going to come right here in the middle of my last two marks. Mark. And continue. And your final mark for the hemline should be all the way over here at your side seam. After draping and marking the front of your circle skirt, go ahead and unpin the drape and continue on to the back. The back of the skirt is draped exactly the same as the front, only difference being that you're starting at the center back and moving around towards your side seam. The draping process is the same, the pinning and marking is the same, and you will be sure to mark your hemline at the same length as you did for the front. After having done so, your circle skirt drape will be complete and you'll be ready to move on to the truing stage of the project.